Eden in Salem. We are studying out of the book of Ephesians. I'm Minister Wheeler, Salem Institutional Baptist Church, where the pastor is Todd Atkins, our under-shepherd, and I'll be coming to you out of the King James Version, where I'm reading on the subject of the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. Six, chapter verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in his power and of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities against powers, against evils of the darkness, against in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in evil days, having done all to stand. Stand before having girded with the waist of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. This is Paul writing his one of his final epistles to the church. This is a, a, exhortation concerning the Christians' warfare. Paul is coming to the closing of his epistle, addressing all the families of God and make a stern appeal to them as soldiers of Christ. Every true child of God soon learned that the Christian life is a warfare. The host of Satan's are committed to hinder, abstract, and to work the Christians and to knock out the individual soldiers out of the combat. The more effective a believer is for the Lord, the more he will experience savage attacks of the enemy. The devil does not waste his ammunition on normal Christians. In our own strength, we are no match for the devil. So the first preparatory command is that we shall be continually strengthened in the Lord and in the boundless resources of his might. God's best soldiers are those who are consciously aware of their weaknesses and ineffectiveness and who rely solely on him. God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Our weakness commends itself to the power of his might. The believer must put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the strategies of the devil. It is necessary to be completely armed. The first piece of armor mentioned in this belt of truth, certainly we must be faithful in the holding the truth of God's word. We must also apply it to our own daily lives. The second piece is the breastplate of righteousness. Every believer must close, be clothed with the righteousness of God, but he must also manifest it, integrity and uprightness in his personal life. David put on the breastplate in Psalm 7, 3 and 5. The Lord Jesus Christ wore it all the time. This is David's letter to the church. That we and he's trying to stir up the, the gift that he have in God to put on the whole armor of God so you may be able to stand in evil times. And the rest of the ministers, the associates, and the pastors will come to you with the rest of the armor of God. So this is our prayer. May we continuously lift up his name. And may God bless you. May God keep you as our prayer. Good afternoon. I will be speaking on Ephesians, the sixth chapter and the 15th verse. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The definition of preparation is the action or process of making or being made ready for the use or consideration. Additional terms for preparation are arrangements and planning and foundation. So what does Ephesians 6 and 15 mean? Roman soldiers 
typically wore sandals, which allowed them to move quickly during battle and provided protection to their feet. Here, Paul imagines the shoes as the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Shoes made a soldier ready to run into battle. The gospel of peace, likewise, makes a believer ready for spiritual battle. Anyone who has walked around outside with no shoes knows that some areas are off limits when you're barefoot. Shoes give you the ability to go almost anywhere. Shoes also provide traction. The gospel anchors our faith in certain bases and universal truths. One of the modern world's most common problems is stress. Yet the peace given through the gospel is the answer to most of our daily anxiety. We can cast our cares on God because he cares for us. That's 1 Peter 5 and 7. Further connecting the concept of shoes with the gospel of peace may also suggest the idea of believers taking the gospel into daily battles, sharing it wherever they go. Matthew 28, 18 and 20. Believers are given the gospel of peace in order to be ready for battle and to help others facing spiritual attack. The gospel is so called because it makes men to be of peaceable tempers and behavior and gives peace to distressed minds. It directs the way to eternal peace and publishes peace made by the blood of Christ and has a much better claim to this name and that the law has which is often called peace by the Jews. The preparation of it does not design a promotitude or readiness which the gospel is a means of and for every good word for the spiritual warfare for the Christian's journey heavenward or for heaven itself but the word signifies a base or a foundation and so it has used by interpreters on Zechariah 5 and 11 and here it designs a firm and solid knowledge of the gospel and it publishes peace by Jesus Christ, which yields a sure foundation for the Christian soldier to set his foot upon and stand fast on it. And it being that to him, as the stone is to the foot, its base or foundation, and for the feet to be shy with it, does not mean the outward conversation being agreeably to the gospel. Though such a walk and conversation is very beautiful and safe, and such may walk in war with interpreting, but it designs the constant and firm standing of believers in the faith of the gospel and so striving and contending for it without being moved from it, that it may continue with them. Shoes or boots, which were sometimes of iron and sometimes of brass, are reckoned among the armor of soldiers. So, really, a summary of Ephesians 6 and 15 will have to go like this. Paul gives specific instructions to children and fathers, stressing obedience and patience, respectively. He also directs servants to serve with sincerity and good intentions, as if they were working for Christ. Masters are warned not to be harsh. The same God who judges all will not give them preference over those they supervised. All Christians are called on to use the tools given us by God for surviving the attacks of the devil. These are imagined as pieces of a suit of armor. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and the hearers and doers of this holy word. Amen. Good afternoon. I am Reverend Jonathan Sanders coming to you from the great Salem Institutional Baptist Church under the guidance of Pastor Todd Atkins. I want to talk with you real briefly about faith. Coming to you out of the NIV on the subject of faith, coming out of Ephesians 6, verse 17. As we know, faith is the subject of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Right away, right off the bat, get into the mustard of the situation. Put on Salvation as your helmet, and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. 
Going back up a step in verse 15, for shoes put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Coming back up some more. For we are not fighting against flesh and blood. Enemies, but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world. Against mighty powers in the dark world. And against evil spirits in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on every place of God's armor. So you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil faith, an assurance of salvation. In other words, to be very brief, when the darts of this world are thrown at you and they're on fire, you need to have the assurance that God's word is what it is. We need to know that faith in him can see us through. There were certain men in the Bible that exemplified great faith. Moses. What should I tell the Israelites, Lord, who has sent me? God, tell them I am that I am. The Israelites were at a rock and a hard place when the army of Egypt was after them. They didn't have any weapons or anything like that. They came to a sea. God made a highway out of no way. Faith. They were hungry. They needed food. God fed them manna. Faith. They, were, they needed water. And God commanded Moses to strike a rock. He gave them water. They didn't want any more manna anymore. They wanted some meat. He gave them quail. All of this from above. Peter claimed that his faith was so strong that he that he loved him. Jesus told him that you'll deny me three times. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Daniel in the lion's den. Faith. Paul under his many, many trials. Psalms 31 and 13, David. Ephesians 6 and 16, Paul. Salvation. The definition of salvation, preservation. Or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss. Salvation is a lifeline. And that lifeline is Jesus Christ. Redemption is in salvation. Deliverance is in salvation. Healing is in salvation. And all of this is in faith. Hebrews 11 and 7. John. Paul. Luke. Abraham. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 and 28. Romans 1, 16. All of these areas are where I've given you that you can find areas and references of faith. As I come to my close, I'm going to read to you Hebrews 
19. 10th chapter, 19 verse. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for him as us through the curtains, that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sure, sincere heart, full assurance of faith, Faith is the belief in found and the found in Jesus Christ. Those of us as blood washed Christians, we have to sharpen our faith in Jesus Christ. I implore you, grab hold to that unchanging faith. This has been Jonathan Sanders under the guidance of Pastor Todd Atkinson. Salem Institutional Baptist Church. Thank you, and God bless. Good evening, family and friends. It is indeed a blessing and a privilege for me to come and share with you again from a study that Pastor Atkins assigned to four of us. I am part of that four group, that quad group, and my four portion of the scripture comes from Ephesians chapter 6, beginning at verse 17, and it says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all of the saints. Thank you, Pastor Atkins, for allowing me again to participate with the group as we study putting on the whole armor of God. I want to set the stage a bit because Paul is writing this letter to the church at Ephesus. And as he's writing this letter, Paul is uh, in prison in Rome. He's writing this letter because uh, after his uh, meeting, his meeting with Jesus Christ, you know, because before Paul was one of those persons who was persecuting the church, Paul has now come to an understanding that the church is very, very important. That, and and he, he only gained this knowledge when he met Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. That, that meeting, that encounter with Christ on the Damascus road changed Paul from being a persecutor of the church to being one who was building the church. So Paul, who has been a Pharisee all of his life, met Jesus on that road to Damascus and, and was converted there by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so Paul now has been building churches and Ephesus was one of the cities in which he spent uh, two years teaching the people there about Jesus Christ. And after Paul left the city uh, and went on further on his journey, uh, Apollos went into the city. And Apollos started teaching about the baptism of Christ. But the difference was Paul was talking about the death, the resurrection, and most of all, the grace of God. And he is saying that the people of Ephesus were Gentiles, but he's letting them know that whether you're a Jew or Gentile, we are all one in Christ Jesus. I felt like I needed to set that stage because when we talk about putting on the whole armor of God, uh, it's, it, it was telling the church that you will, because you are a Christian, you will encounter people who don't believe as you believe, people who will attempt to turn you away from the faith. But Paul is saying to them, and, and he's writing this letter, even though it was written specifically to the Ephesians church, he was writing this letter as a circular letter so that all of the churches could read this letter and come to understand that in order for you to be able to stand in difficult times, you needed to suit up. Paul being in prison, he had an opportunity to observe what the Roman soldiers looked like. And here he talks about putting on the helmet of salvation. 
And a helmet was used to protect the head. It was made out of metal and, and it was so, uh, because if the head gets out of order, the whole body loses its balance. So Paul is saying to the people, after he gives them all of these put on the breastplate of righteousness and have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and, and the belt of truth around your waist, he ultimately says, you need the helmet. Now, now, if you look at pictures of the Roman helmet, they were made so that the back of the head was covered so that if you got hit on the back of the head, you would be okay and you'd be able to resign, be, get up and go on. Or if it came all the way down to the side of the face, protecting the ears and what they would hear. You know why? Because it was protecting the brain. The brain, the seat of understanding had to be protected. We have to put on the whole armor of God in these times where People have walked away from God. People have stopped believing in God. And Paul is writing this letter to the church, but it is a letter that is effective even now because today we uh, feel often that we know better how to live our lives than than people my age or people in ages past are the people who built Salem Baptist Church. We know more about how to be the church by coming up with strategies and skills, but what we are taught here is that we need to put on the whole armor of God. We need to, to come to know who Jesus is and know the power of his resurrection. Know what it means to walk by faith and not by sight. I know that sounds, I often use that and I know I talk a lot about faith, but I want to tell you today, my sisters and my brothers, as I talk about putting on the helmet of salvation, that is what I've learned and put in my head about who Jesus Christ is. I've come to know that he is indeed the savior of the world. And it tells me that I need to put on this understanding. I need to know who Jesus is, not simply go on what someone else has told me but I need a clear understanding because the devil comes because Satan knows what our weaknesses are. He knows the loves and the desires and, and he comes to destroy. He will destroy your family. He will destroy your home. He will destroy your surroundings. He will try to destroy you unless you come to know who Jesus is. So my friends, when he says, put on the whole armor of God. It says, take this helmet of salvation, put it on your head, put on the understanding that Jesus Christ is love and that it put on the understanding that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Put on the understanding that nothing is impossible with God. Put on the understanding that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Put on the understanding that without God, I am nothing, but with God, I am all that God would have me to be. And I want you to understand this evening that as we talk about putting on the whole, um, uh, putting on the whole armor of God, we, we need to fight off some things. Someone's already talked about that. So I just want you to seal in your head who he is. God is a God of love. God is a God of understanding. God is a God of peace. God is a God of war. He will fight your battles for you if you just be still. He tells you to trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. But in all of your ways, acknowledge God. In all of your ways, in your workplace, in your finances, in everything that you have, in your marriage, in your relationships, Put on the whole armor of God because the moment you begin to believe and trust God, someone, specifically Satan, because he says, I'm walking to and fro upon this world seeking whom I may devour and none of us are without being prey to the hands of the enemy. So my sisters and my brothers, put on the whole armor of God because Satan knows your desires. He knows your likes. He knows what you want. He knows your goals. He knows your ambitions and what his job is to break everything that is within you. And I want to say that even in this day of COVID-19, when everybody is looking for a healing coming from someplace, I believe that God is going to send God's healing through somebody 
that he is going to create and give vision to. He's going to show someone something that looks impossible to everybody else because with God, nothing is impossible. My friends, I encourage you to trust God in this day and time and know that your money may be funny and your change may be looking strange. But if you put that little that you have in the hands of the Lord, God is going to see you through. Put on the whole armor of God and put on it, put it in your head, put it in your head because it starts in the brain, but then it manifests itself in your heart and then it's lived out. And you know, as I was preparing this study, I thought about this. I said, you know, you don't need a hat if you're going to stay in the house. And so let me just say to you in my last few seconds here today, if all you intend to do with your faith is keep it to yourself, then you don't need the helmet of salvation because you're going to stay in the house to protect you. But God is calling for a people who are unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Someone who is unafraid to stand up and speak truth to power. God is looking for someone who is willing to speak and stand up and be the people of God and to tell the world that the Savior is alive and he is alive today and that he has come to seek and to save those of us who are lost. He has come to bring us to a new lifestyle. He has come to teach us what it means to be a child of the Most High God. My friends, I pray that you will put the helmet of your on your head because you don't need a hat if you're going to stay in the house. God bless you. Goodbye.